Hello, this is Stone Warden back with another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy XI. Glad you're here. Been busy, busy, busy in between episodes as usual, and we're capped. Uh, capped at 70 for Warrior, Monk, and Thief. And what that means is that we need to complete uh, Limit Break 5, Shattering Stars from Matt. However, before we do that, one of the things that I want to do is um, get the Monk Artifact Armor set. There's a couple of pieces that I want for the map fight for Monk, and that is the job that I think I want to do Shattering Stars on. As a matter of fact, just as a treat for for you, what we'll probably do is, is Shattering Stars on all three of those jobs that I have at 70, but um, we'll see how that goes. So today... What we want to do is a 6-for-6 six six Monk Artifact 1 set extravaganza. So we're going to run through these quests pretty quick. I've already farmed up the coffer keys that I need, the three keys that, um, that we'll be using. And so we're going to head out and get this episode rolling. Fantastic. So we start our quest line off at the Steaming Sheep Restaurant here in wonderful beautiful port bastock and yes the steaming sheep is a, is a wonderful name for a restaurant gets you all kinds of hungry we're going to talk to this fella here ogby ogby All right, and Ogby sends us to Guskin Mines, which can be incredibly loud. Um, not sure what that noise is supposed to be, but anyway, um, maybe I'll turn the volume down and so you don't have to hear it. But so what we're going to do is we're going to head down to um, like the third map down in the basement here in the mines, and we're going to trade the pickaxe to a question mark point, and we're going to spawn an NM called the Wandering Ghosts. Come straight ahead uh, to this H7 intersection and then come down the stairs. And then use the westmost lever to open the door. And in this room, there are some pretty high level mobs. They added these. A few years ago, so just um, don't run through here with your ego. Just go ahead and sneak an invisible up, just to uh, just to be safe. Okay, head to that northwest corner of that big room. Head down this tunnel. Again, come all the way north to F5, and then take this uh, little ramp down the tunnel. And this part of the mine features creepy upside-down mannequin ghosts, I guess, um, with scary ghost noises, so isn't that fun? And then you keep heading northwest-ish to G7. All right, and here's a question mark point at G7. Just going to assume this is the correct one. Trade the pickaxe to it and should get our NM from there. There he is. Wandering ghost. Okay, and the Wandering Ghost dropped the Miner's Pendant. We're supposed to take that back and trade that to Ogby. Uh, 
Back at the steaming sheep. Come back in and trade the miner's pendant to Ogby. All right, got the beat Sesti. The next quest in the quest line is called the First Meeting. And that also is given by Ogby, but since we just completed a quest from him, we need to zone. So we need to cross the zone line and then come back. I guess that makes him think that it's been a few days since we've seen him. I don't know how that works, but anyway, you have to zone and then head back and talk to Ogby yet again. Having zoned in the Bastok markets for a fraction of a second, Ogby should now give us the next quest. All right, now we're supposed to head to Fei Yin. And I've neglected to purchase the map for Fei Yin before coming out here, but basically the Unity Warp brings you in at the same entrance that you would come in from uh, Bosidine Glacier. So I'm going to be heading sort of northeast towards the eastern side of the first map to the Kubia Arena. We zone in and out of there and we'll get a cutscene for that. All right, carefully work your way over to K8, and there's this uh, Surmet portal here. Open that door, and behind all these folks is a home point. Zone in and zone out, and we should get a cutscene. Okay, key item letter from Dalzak. Next stop on the list is Devoy. We're going to do a, a quick fight out there. And once we zone into Devoy, we're going to head over to F7 and find the Hide Flap, which is uh, just a point of interest that we can, we can check, and that will spawn a couple of NMs for us to fight. Good times, good times. All right, and here's our hide flap at F7, right over here in this um, little open area. So Bylop Dop is a monk in him, and Delok Nock is a paladin in him. And if you haven't cleared the area, then all of the rest of the orcs will aggro, or link rather, with these two NMs, and so um, be aware of that. It depends on how high level you are when you're trying to, to do this. At level 70, it's pretty trivial, but um, at lower levels, it may be maybe a little bit more challenging. So maybe you clear the area out before spawning these NMs. I don't know. Okay, and after taking out those two NMs and whatever else links with them, we head back up to F6. And there's supposed to be another hide flap up here in the F6 area.
All right, so on BG Wiki, it says that there's another hide flap. I'm not 100% sure that that's the case because uh, just checked that same one after beating those two NMs and got the key item Sandorian Martial Arts Scroll, which is what we were after anyway. Okay, so nonetheless, check the hide flap, beat the NMs, check the hide flap again get the key item, and then head back to Ogby for the reward. Back at the steaming sheet for our reward. Temple Gators, not a bad piece, Dex 3, Enhances Dodge. Okay, a couple things here, so next up is the Borgertz's Striking Hands quest. Keep in mind, if you have another Borgertz's Hand quest open for a different job, you have to finish that one first before you can start a new one. But we come here and talk to uh, Gooselam. So for Borgert's Striking Hands, the coffer is the Crawler's Nest coffer key. Also of importance, before you go opening any coffers and wasting keys, make sure that you have the right quest active in your log. So again, for Monk, this is Borgert's Striking Hands. So to open the coffer, what we have to do is first find it. So as I've recommended before in previous episodes, have the map open up in front of you on your phone or laptop or tablet or whatever else you have. If you're looking at the marked map on BG Wiki or FFXI-Atlas, the coffer locations, the possible spawn locations are going to be marked with pink squares. The chest locations again are blue squares, so we're going to be looking for those pink, I don't know, is that pink or magenta, whatever, um, squares. And so there's a couple different places in Crawler's Nest. Makes it can make it a little frustrating to find, but we'll um, we'll do our best. If you look at the map, there are seven possible coffer spawn locations. Five are up here in the uh, the north part of the map sort of together and then there's two down in the in the basement so given uh, odds I'm gonna start up here at the northern end and you'll know you're in the right place when you get to this drop that has all of the labyrinth lizards alright from that room with the labyrinth lizards you head north and then west and then that brings you to a room with some uh, rumble crawlers in it and off of this room with the rumble crawlers are three of the possible seven so this is a good place to be they can spawn in this, these little sort of alcoves there's one there's two and there's three so no dice in that room from the Rumble Crawlers, you can head north on a hallway with some hornets here, some wispies. And that'll bring you into a big room with some dragonflies. And there are two spawn locations here on the south side of the room. Check it up, and there it is. Trade that, got the old gauntlets key item, and let's be out. All right, now we have the old gauntlets key item. We're going to head back and talk to Gooselam. And if you watch the Thief episode, you will know that he's going to immediately tell us that he cannot repair them. All right. 
If this is your first AF, go back and watch the Thief episode because then I do the next two steps, which are talking to Deadly Minnow and then going to Lower Juno and speaking to Yin Pokonaku. Since this is not my first hands AF quest on this character, I'm going to head directly to Port Juno and start the cutscene there. Here in Port Juno, we head downstairs. And boom, here's our question mark. And thank you, Creepy Ghost Armor Borgerts, for offering to fix these up for us. We're going to head to Castles of All Baileys and fight Dark Spark. Back in the lovely, cheery, beautiful Castles of All Baileys, which is extra dark today because of the uh, darkness weather. Not sure exactly what that equates to in real life, but. But yes, darkness, weather. So uh, anyway, it is especially dreary here, but we're here to kill the dark spark. Just head west until we get to the iron gate with the torches in front of it. Defeat the Dark Spark, touch the torch again for the Shadow Flames key item, and then again, let's be out. Oh, my warp ring has three minutes left on it, so we'll use a scroll. Back again in poor Juno. Head back down to the same box. For the Temple Gloves. Strength 4 enhances boost. Alright, and the two coffers for Monk are Garlage Citadel and Bido. Again, I've already farmed up the keys just to save us some time. I think I will go to Bido first, and then we'll head out to Garlage Citadel. So, you have to be on the correct job. Um... To get those pieces, so we have to be on Monk. Okay, a couple things about the Beto Coffer chest. It is in that underground section on map two that you get to by going to that K6 tunnel. So we have to go through the first tunnel, come out on the other side, go back around, and come up to the K6 uh, entrance. Secondly, because I'm going to use the mute to get past the afflictor without uh, the curse and the slow running and all that, go ahead and summon my trusts now, and that way we don't have to worry about being muted. So, no big deal on, um, on Monk. Again, if you're on some sort of mage job and, and going through here, highly recommended that you have echo drops. And by the way, if you're a mage, just keep echo drops with you. Pro tip there. And if you're not quite sure how to navigate Bido, um, go back and check the Magicite episode. I go into detail how to go through the tunnels, where you come out, where you go back down on the other side. That's a pretty good guide there. And again, run around that top level till you get to this uh, K6 tunnel, and then head down here. And by the way, I would 100% expect to fight. When you open a coffer, you lose your sneak status, and these coffers tend to be here in Bido stuck in a room with um, with a bunch of mobs. So I would I would expect to either clear out the room ahead of time, in which case you worry a little bit about somebody coming in and, and grabbing the coffer up, out from under you 
or opening the call for losing sneak and then having two or three things to um, to attack you. All right, now when you come downstairs into this side of, of Bideau in the basement, um, if we head to the south southwest, there are three possible locations there. And then if we head to the east, there are five sort of five locations there. So I'm going to head um, uh, down here to the south southwest first and check this side. And if your mute status runs out, there is one down here on this side of the map. It's in this room. But there's no coffer, so we'll head up and go to the east. Okay, head east. There's a possible coffer spawn in this room, but nothing for us, so we'll keep going. There's another possible coffer spawn in here, but uh, again, nothing this time. All right, so then that brings us to this sort of crossroads intersection type room. And there are uh, three more to the north, to the east, to the south possible locations. So let's go check those. There's another mute up here to the north of this intersection, but no coffer. The east room is full of quadavs and what looks like uh, little nests. And again, no coffer. Then that means it's the last possible space, right? Let's hope so. In the room with the afflictor. And there's the coffer. Oh, fantastic. So mute. <laughs> so you have to watch your mute status. Mute ran out um, right as I, uh, as I walked into this room. There's the coffer. And let's risk it. Let's see what happens. And we got our equipment and a whole bunch of aggro, like I said. While my trust fight that out with those guys, uh, we got the Temple Cyclist, which is the body piece. Um, accuracy 5, which normally would be pretty good, although we have the Scorpion Harness, which has accuracy 10 and evasion 10 on it. However, it is an interesting piece for uh, the vitality that's on it and the enhances chakra effects. That would be a good one to macro in right before chakra. And no, I haven't really talked about uh, how to do that yet, so. All right, and I mentioned before that uh, Crawler's Nest can be sort of frustrating, but we find ourselves now in Garlage Citadel trying to find the coffer, and this is the granddaddy of frustrating coffers just because the possible spawn locations are all over the place. It's much easier now than it used to be because they're, the different spawn locations can be behind different uh, banishing gates. And when you needed four people to open, open a banishing gate, you, you literally had to have a bunch of people come out to help you open the banishing gate but a lot of times the only people the only reason people would come out to to do so is because they were also hunting for the coffer and so then you had uh, multiple people who would come out and open the gate for each other and then compete for the same coffer it was an absolute nightmare so 
Thank goodness for the pouch of weighted stones key item that we can now use to open the gates uh, by ourselves. So we had passed the first banishing gate on our way to the second banishing gate. And here is gate number two. Then if you head west from there, there's a one spot and then um, a few spots to the east. Oh, and how lucky. There's the coffer right here at G8. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Booyah, Temple Crown. Let's check that out. It enhances focused, uh, mind five. So, not a fantastic piece, but um, nonetheless, one of the one of the AF one pieces. So now that we have the Temple Crown and all of the other pieces, we're missing the uh, the leg piece, the Temple Hose. That comes from a quest called True Strength, the last one of this quest line, and it starts with an NPC in the Metalworks called Ayami. And uh, so she's in Metalworks K7, so we'll head back and um, speak to her. This is a pretty simple quest, but first we're going to grab a Yagudo drink. If you have progressed far enough into Rhapsody's of Vanadil, you can also purchase the Yugudo drink from the Curio vendor Moogle. Uh, not sure what the price is on that. And again, as I've, I've discussed before, I'm holding off on Rhapsody's of Vanadil just for storyline. It's making the game a little bit harder, more frustrating, but that's okay because uh, what we're going to do is some of the other content first in the, in the expansions, really in the order that they came out so that we can um, enjoy the game the way it was supposed to. So anyway, once you have a Yagudo drink, either from the auction house or your Curio vendor Moogle, um, we're gonna um, uh, head off to Ayame to start the mission. All right, so again, we do not need the Yagudo drink to start the quest. I just like to grab what I need before I start any quest. But anyway, we head up to Metalworks up here in the uh, northeast corner of the zone. And in this cannonry door, we should find a Yame. And make sure you get the cutscene that talks about the bottle of Yagudo drink and the Zalma feather. She gives a, f a few quests depending on where you're at. So want to make sure you get the right cutscene from her. So you may have to talk to her a few times depending on which uh, gets flagged first. All right. Having obtained the Yagudo drink from either the auction house, like I did, or the Curio vendor Moogle, if you're far enough along in Rhapsody's of Vanadil and flagging the quest True Strength from Ayami in Metalworks, we head off to Castle Astrosia. And basically the deal here is we head back up to that top floor, you know, the floor with the, um, uh, where, you, where you end up putting in the password. And there's a torch with a question mark on it at H8. So we're gonna head up there trade the Yugudo drink to it, and defeat an NM. Here's our door with the combination. And after coming through the door with the combination, just uh, keep on coming, keep on trekking through, and that brings us up here to the top floor. I call it the top floor anyway. 
And there's a torch here with a question mark. I think this is the right one, but um, should be able to trade our Yagudo drink to this and spawn the NM. Yep, there he is. This guy has some hit points on him. Um, I'm level 70, and he's not a pushover. Also uses 100 fists. Looks like he can only use it once, but... Um, yeah, better take this guy serious. Zalmo the Savage drops the Zalmo Feather. Take that back to Ayami, and that'll wrap up the quest for us. And that's the Temple Hose. The level 60 piece, guarding skill plus 10, counter plus 1, and um, a hefty bit of defense and hit points on it. So this is the main piece that I wanted for the mat fight. Alright, awesome, wonderful, fantastic. That's 6 for 6 AF1 pieces, the weapon plus the 5 armor pieces. Going to use that to get ready for the mat fight, the Shattering Stars quest. Hopefully going to be able to knock that out on Monk. Going to do that old school. Going to do that solo. No trust involved. So, fingers crossed. Going to prep for that in between episodes. But really exciting stuff next time we get together. Going to do some Shattering Stars. And hopefully knock out some rank missions as well if we have time. Thank you again for hanging out. For questing that out with me here. And uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.